Hey everybody, welcome to our channel living in Richmond, Virginia, where we show you exactly what it's like to live, work, eat, and play right here in our VA. In this video, we're going to show you 21 things that you have to pay attention to while you're house hunting. Missing any of these items could cost you thousands of dollars. So if you want to make sure you're buying a good home and not making a mistake, be sure to watch this whole video. If this is your first time to our channel, welcome. I'm Taylor Jefferson. And I'm Sarah Jefferson, and we own and operate Jefferson Grove Real Estate. While some realtors dabble in relocation, we live and breathe it. We have helped families from all over the world relocate to Richmond. And if you're thinking about doing the same, be sure to download our free Richmond relocation guide. It's full of useful information all about Richmond and the surrounding areas. The link is in the comments below and on our banner image. If you haven't done so already, you have to subscribe to our channel because we will continue to be posting new videos all about living in Richmond, including more neighborhood tours, videos where we take you inside of houses that are for sale here in Richmond, fun things to do in RVA, and lots more coming up. The Richmond real estate market is still very competitive, and more than likely when you submit an offer on a home, you're going to be giving some concessions on the home inspection, if you're even able to do one. That's why it's so important to pay attention to these things while you're at the house during your showing appointment. Paying attention and taking note of these items will help you get a better feel for how well the home has been maintained, what type of maintenance will be required in the future, as well as any costly repairs that might be needed right now. So let's get started. We are first going to start with the most problematic area of every home, the crawl space. This is the area where most of the costly issues from home inspections are found, as well as it's the most neglected part of every home because very few homeowners ever check it out. So our first thing to check out in the crawl space is does the crawl space feel dry or does it feel humid and damp? The second thing you want to check out is if there's a vapor barrier in the crawl space. If there is, is it intact? What type of condition is it in? What I'm poking at here is whether or not we should expect to find mold in the crawl space. So number three is to actually look at the floor joist and see if there's any mold growth. It's not uncommon if there is, and we know mold can be a triggering word, but mold is only a symptom. We need to figure out the cause, which is what number one and number two give us some insight on. While you're in the crawl space, you should also look to see what type of piping is used for the plumbing in the house. What I'm hoping to not find is polybutylene piping, which is usually a gray or blue color flexible hose style piping. It should also have the letters PB on it. This type of piping has been known to fail and leak at the connections. It will also increase your homeowner's insurance, so it's important to know if you're buying a house with this type of plumbing. Number five is something that we're going to look for in multiple areas throughout the home, and that is you should check for signs of settlement. In the crawl space, you can check along the foundation walls for cracks and broken cinder blocks. Also look at the foundation piers. What type of condition are they in? Do the floor joists seem adequately supported, or are there signs that the piers have settled and they're no longer supporting the floor joist above them? While you're looking at the foundation walls, Number six is to look for signs of termites. You can find them by looking for mud tubules coming from the ground and growing vertically along the foundation wall. Termites are pretty common in Virginia, and treatment isn't that expensive, but the damage caused by them could be. The last item in the crawl space you'll want to try to check out is the age of the air handler slash furnace, as they are sometimes located in the crawl space. Now we are going to examine the exterior and try to learn what we can about the home from the outside. If you ever get to a showing early, checking out these next three things would be a great use of your time. So first, be sure to examine the siding and take a look at the material used and the condition it's in. Hardboard and cedar siding are the most high maintenance sidings, whereas brick, vinyl, and hardy plank are very low maintenance. While you're looking at the siding, this is another opportunity to check for signs of settlement. If brick, are there cracks throughout it? Be sure to look at the foundation from the outside too. Next, walk the yard and check for signs of drainage problems. Is the yard sloped away from the house or towards the house? How about the neighbor's yards? Do they slope towards your home? Does the yard feel soggy? When was the last time it rained? If it's been a really dry week, but the yard is still squishy, that could be a problem. After looking at the yard, turn your eyes upward and look at the roof. What type of material is it? More than likely, it's gonna be a composition shingle, so be sure to check out its appearance. Does it look textured and granulated still? Is it stained and discolored? Are there lots of trees and branches directly above it or touching the roof? If so, that could cause the roof to run through its lifespan faster. While outside, go to the side or backyard and look at the outdoor HVAC units and check their age. Sometimes the outdoor units are replaced separately, so you could have lots of different ages on each component of your heating and cooling systems. Sometimes the date of manufacture is right on there, but most of the time you'll need to Google the manufacturer and serial number to figure out your built. 
Now we're back inside the home and we'll visit the second most commonly neglected area, which is the attic. There are only a few things to check up on up here, but they are important. First, look to the sides of the attic and see if you notice any daylight from the outside coming in. Sometimes there are vents along the side walls that help let the attic breathe. Make sure there is some type of screen to prevent pests from coming inside. It's all fun and games until you get bats in the attic. Probably the most useful thing to check while in the attic is the roof. How does the plywood sheathing underneath the roof look? Is it clean or does it appear stained? If stained, is it damp or is it dry to the touch? This will indicate whether there's a current leak or a previous leak. Also check for signs of leaking around any boot vents. Lastly, take a look at the insulation. If blown insulation, does it appear to provide adequate coverage or do you see the ceiling drywall from the floor below? If you're in the attic during the summer, you can feel for yourself just how hot it can get up there and adequate insulation will help keep your energy bills lower. Now we are going to look around the inside of the house and you want to pay attention to what you see in front of you more than just you can't believe the paint colors the sellers chose. While visiting each room, take notice of the windows. Are they older, wooden ones, or newer, energy efficient windows? If newer, do any of them appear to be fogged? This could indicate a broken seal in the window. Not the end of the world, but something worth noting. While your eyes are looking at the windows, take a glance above them and see if you notice any cracking along the drywall at the corners of them. Do the same above all the doors. This is another way to check for settlement, but from the inside of the house. All of these next items are ways to look for water leaks. Water is a force to be reckoned with, and it's amazing the amount of damage it could do to the interior of the home. So number 14 is to check underneath all the sinks. Look for signs of staining below, which could indicate they're leaking. This is another spot you can check to see what type of piping the house has. Next, turn your eyes up to the ceiling. Look for staining or signs of paint that doesn't quite match the rest of the ceiling. If you find staining or what appears to be a stain that was painted over, does the area affected have a bathroom above it? Might be worth asking the seller what that's all about. Maybe it's an old repair, but maybe not. If there's a basement, take a look for signs of water intrusion or some type of mitigation system like a sump pump. With older homes, we automatically assume the basement leaks, but even with newer construction, you'll still want to be extra vigilant because it can be very costly to fix a leaky basement. While you're going up and down all the different levels of the home, count how many thermostat controls you see. Thermostats can either control separate units for each level of the home or control dampers that open and close to allow different temperature settings on each floor. If there are multiple levels on the home, but only one thermostat, you could have trouble keeping the house comfortable. Lastly, be sure to check out the age of the water heater. This, in my opinion, is more for informational purposes because I routinely find hot water heaters 20 plus years old. Most inspectors would tell you to just run them into the ground and replace only when needed. Our last three tips are more general things you should be aware of before you go look at the house in person. Number 19 is to pay attention to the age of the home. Certain year-built ranges will have specific issues associated with its date of construction, such as electrical or plumbing. In houses in the fan built before 1940, you'll find knob and tube wiring. Homes in the suburbs from the mid-60s to the mid-70s could have aluminum wiring. And houses built between 1978 through 1995 could have polybutylene piping. For homes that are 20 to 30 years old, the roof might be towards the end of its life, and if the house is 10 to 15 years old, then the HVAC might be about to go. So if you don't see in the description knew this or knew that, then go ahead and assume the worst. This next one is something we check on every single time before submitting an offer on a home, but be sure to check out the flood map. You don't want to be surprised by this one because flood insurance isn't cheap to pay, and it hurts your value on resale too. The last important thing to check out is the neighbor's yard, especially if you're in an HOA. Looking at the fences, pools, patios, and other outdoor equipment or improvements should provide you some insight for you as to what might be allowed within the HOA's rules and regulations. So if you want a six foot wooden privacy fence, but literally every other house only has a four foot black aluminum fence, you might not want to buy this home. So there you have it, 21 things you have to pay attention to when you're house hunting. Now, if you work with us, you don't have to worry about these as much because while you're checking out the house, we'll be looking at all these items for you. <laughs> if you liked this video and found it helpful, please let us know by hitting that like button. And be sure to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on any of our other upcoming videos. If you're thinking about moving to Richmond, definitely hit us up. We have the knowledge and experience to help make your move as stress-free and easy as possible. <laughs> Thanks for being here with us today. We'll see you next time. Bye.